but it's hard to let go of what you've been holding on to for so long, even if it's not working anymore. It's really hard to let go. It's like, beg you, see it differently. I beg you to let go. It's not normal. It's just old. It's time to drop it and move forward. You may be a product of your past, but you don't have to be a prisoner of your past. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready, everything that's backwards and everything that's negative, and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. The devil is a lie. Just because you're used to it doesn't make it normal. Some of you, you are taking too much time trying to convince people to love you that do not matter. Tolerating and trying to get people engaged that don't matter, that don't care, that are never ever going to help you get into your destiny. I came to preach to somebody who everybody else might have given up on you and life might not be where you want it to be and you might not have been what you could have been, but it's not too late to become who you are. Every single time I hear about an issue, every single time I hear another story of pain, every single time I see a seemingly impossible situation, I smile wryly because I know by the grace of God and by His power, I have a testimony. Come on, it is never too... People want to know. We find ourselves announcing our standards to our relatives, our friends, our associates. We shout our beliefs and condemn those who believe any differently, but then we don't walk the talk. We end up acting in a way far different from the beliefs we've shouted. This is inconsistent. This leads to a loss of credibility among those who watch us. And more importantly, this leads to a loss of credibility within ourselves. The only thing worse than one who is inconsistent in applying their self-imposed discipline is one who has never considered the need or the value of discipline at all. So what kind of courage do you have? Is yours sort of floating between depending on the situation? Or do you know the difference between right and wrong for your life? And you've made up your mind. Our mind is the control tower of our life. All of our decisions are there. And the truth is, whatever we are today is the result of what we've been thinking about all those years. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you don't like what's going on around you, maybe you should ask yourself the question, what am I thinking about? What do I think about myself? What do I think about other people? Upset because your plans didn't work out. It's time to kiss some things goodbye. Don't bring bitterness into a new year. Don't bring self-pity, a chip on your shoulder. That was in your past. It doesn't belong in the future. You cannot embrace the new things God has in store as long as you're holding on to the old. What we think about is really what controls us. This is a control tower that everything else is a result of how we think. And we can't control everybody else in control of all of our circumstances, but we are going to respond to circumstances in one way or the other. And so what you have to ask is this, what is it that determines what I think? This, this mind of yours controls everything else in your life. Are you satisfied with your life as it is? Are you? Is your life giving you what you want? If you had your life to live over again, could you have done more than what you've done thus far? When I ask audiences that, most people agree, yes, I could have done more. I know I could have done more. I've wasted a lot of valuable time. If you're going to lose something, lose money. You can recapture that. Don't lose time. You can't get that back. But I think being grateful probably is number one. If you've got a job, you've got to be grateful. Say, this isn't the greatest job in the world. Even if it's a transitional job getting you where you want to go, you've got to be grateful. You don't have to love your job or be passionate about your job. Just passionate about staying steady, working hard, learning skills, doing this job so well that the next one will be even better. And taking such good care of this opportunity, another one will present itself. What's next for me after all of this? 
I don't think that things just happen. I believe that they happen just. We have a mindset. We don't want to be the same coming out of this. That you, you want some radical change. That this could be a major defining moment for you. A day that turns your life around. If you have an extreme desire to wish to be successful so you can accomplish all you wish to accomplish, be as generous as you'd like to be, be as strong as you'd like to be. And I think if you say you have to find your passion, people find that a little bit confusing. Where would I find it and what could I be passionate about? I guess you could start with saying I'm passionate about providing unusual success for myself and for my family. Then I think the key is to let what you want to accomplish, let that grow. Or at first, this is as far as you can see. But if you'll do that, you can say, wow, maybe I could multiply by two, by three, and expand my vision, accomplish a lot more. Do you know where to hide when discouragement comes flying past your head? Or do you run to the same enemy that is attacking you in an effort to hide? I'm not talking about physical places because the hiding places that we create that destroy us are usually the ones in our heart emotional states when attacks come i've learned where to run and the reason that i'm moving forward in my life this year isn't because i won't be attacked it's because i know what to run to when i am go out of their way to try and show people that they have it the more you go out of your way to show me that you have it you're confirming to me that you really don't got it because it's perception versus reality. Because you pulling up to the club in the nicest car don't mean you actually got gas money. As you begin to look at your emotional, your spiritual and intellectual development, how many books did you read? How many classes did you take to begin to develop yourself professionally, to improve your craft or your skill? How many new things did you learn? Just take some personal inventory, just thinking, just thinking, just thinking. Beginning to know yourself, what are the things about your past that has influenced you right now? You see, a dream, when you get it, will encourage you. There's something about a dream that brings encouragement and joy to people's lives. It gives you excitement. It encourages you. The people who are discouraged are the people who don't have a dream. Because when you have a dream, it makes you get up in the morning. It makes you put your clothes on and go to work because you've got a dream. And a dream has the power to encourage you. You have not because you ask not. It didn't say you have not because your credit ain't straight. It simply say you have not because you ask not. But you don't ask because you ain't got that together. When you ask God for something, quit tripping. He got it from here. The same wind blows on us all. The wind of disaster, the wind of opportunity, the wind of change. The wind when it's upside down, the wind when it's favorable and unfavorable. The same wind blows on us all. The economic wind, the social wind. The same wind blows on everybody. The difference in where you arrive in one year, three years, five years, the difference in arrival is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the same. Joy can only really come to my life when I am focused on what God is doing in this moment. And I cannot focus on what God is doing in this moment in my life if I'm consumed with what he's doing in somebody else's or if I'm still in regret and bitterness about what happened three years ago or three months ago. A lot of our lack of joy is really not about possession, it's about position. What I mean is this, he set joy before him. It's not a question of God's presence, it's about yours. Are you present in this moment? You can't live off of yesterday's manna and expect to have victory today. Yesterday's information may not work today. Stay open for change. Be willing to try something new. What made you successful five years ago may not make you successful today. Have the attitude, God, I'm ready for new things. If you don't innovate, you will evaporate. You can't rely on what got you to where you are to keep you where you are. The world is changing. You can't afford to sit back on autopilot and just coast, do things the same way. You'll get left behind. 
But if we're not conscious of dropping a thought or a behavior that's no longer needed, we take old thoughts, old behaviors that serve an old version of ourselves into trying to become the new version of ourselves. So ask yourself that question. What do I need to drop that's no longer needed? Is it a person? Is it a thought? Is it a behavior? Or is it an emotion? If someone is controlling you, it's not their fault, it's yours. You have to put your foot down, make a change. This is your hour. I know people that spend more time worried about what other people think about them than they do pursuing their own dreams and goals. And it's great to get free from addictions, but one of the greatest freedoms is to get free from people. Being successful, y'all, is not a magic trick. You have to learn the principles of success. You can be successful at anything. You really can, man. I don't have no education. I'm telling you, God has an incredible life for you. All you got to do is ask him for it. Be willing to put in the work. But now this work part is hard. Success is hard. But let me ask you a question. Ain't not being successful hard too? You cannot reach your destiny dragging people along, trying to keep everyone happy. Life is like an elevator. The higher you go up, like those spaceships, they let certain stuff off because it's too heavy. Yet some people just too heavy when it comes to drama. You want, when you have goals and dreams and you want to fine tune your life and approach to life, you want to create a drama free zone. What else is in you? Who are you ignoring? Is there a version of you you're ignoring? So think about that stuff and really begin to ask yourself, am I satisfied where I am? And start listening to that voice inside of you saying, hey, listen, listen, it's whispering right now, but it's calling you. It's saying there's something more. There's something else. There's something else you can get. Deciding to keep your word. If you just decide, I'm going to keep my word. If I say something, I'm going to do it regardless. Being more considerate, more disciplined being more adventurous find something that you can look at your life that you say hey i know i've got a problem in this area being late i need to take care of that procrastinating i need to deal with that for things to change you have to change i was hoping the government would change and taxes would change i wished for everything to change and my teacher said no mr owen for things to change for you you have to change don't wish it was easier wish you were better don't wish it was easier Wish you were better. And here's the big one. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. You simply need more skills. Stop telling the old story. Here's the truth. Nobody cares. No one cares if you've had a setback. No one cares if you had a victory. And none of those failures, none of those setbacks, none of those victories, and that old character you keep playing is the very thing that will prevent you from becoming this new version of you. Not taking care of business, being seriously not serious, creating an imbalance in my life where I'm spending more time looking at television or having social fun and not spending enough time working on me. See, most people, ladies and gentlemen, spend more time working on their jobs than they'd spend working on themselves. It's a story if you're stuck. It's an old story you're telling with an old character that was last year's version, last decade's version. Who's the new character? What's the new script? What's the new story? Your personal philosophy is like a guidance system that helps you make decisions what to do, what not to do. From the information you get and what you learn and what you know, we decide. Maybe your philosophy would have been uh, five years ago never to attend seminars like this. You just didn't go. Now, five years later, here you are. Something happened along the way. So now that little amendment in your philosophy, you now say, I'm going to regularly go because it doesn't take but a few ideas to make a great difference in your income, personal life, social life, and all the rest. A change of mind, a change of idea. The more we learn, the more we know, the better we're able to make better decisions. So what is the worst thing that can happen? I want you to visualize that, experience that, feel the nervousness and the discomfort. And the more you run it in your mind, the less power that it will have. Your philosophical guidance system does two things. Number one, helps you to see the dangers on one side so you can avoid those. 
But here's what else your guidance system does. Helps you to see the opportunities on the other side so that you can expand those, maximize those. And here's what that's called. The game of life is to minimize the dangers and maximize the opportunities. And the more we know and the more we learn, the more experience we gather helps us to keep continually adjusting our philosophical guidance system so that we minimize more dangers, maximize more opportunities. That's really the game of life. Stop hanging out with people that make you look good by how little they know. And so you can condescend to them so that you can be a great fish in a small pond. Get around people who make you feel stupid because they stretch you. They make you grow. They make you read. They make you study. They stretch you. They expose you to great information. Then you can make great decisions. No matter what's going on in your life, happy and so blessed that people will envy you and envy your life no matter what's going on in your life. Now that blessing is attached to a moral excellence or a virtue of soul called the poor in spirit, which really means the humble-minded, those who are totally dependent on God, and those who don't think that they're better than other people. Have you ever had anybody turn on you? It's, it's one thing to have an enemy. I don't have no problem with that because if I know you're my enemy, I dress for you. I dress, I come in there prepared because I already know you and me, we don't do each other. We don't do that. So, okay. But the heart cracks when somebody who fought with you now fights against you. The future is actually the place where there is threat. And it's always going to be there. So what do you do? You make sacrifices in the present so that the future is better. Everyone does that. That's what you're doing right now. That's what you're doing here. It's amazing. You can bargain with reality. You can forestall gratification now. And it'll pay off at a place in time that doesn't even exist yet. Who would have believed that? It's like that's a miracle that that occurs. Learn number one from your own experiences and learn number two from other people's experiences. If you want to live a dynamic life, multiplying your income, multiplying your future, be a good student. If a good idea comes your way, write it down, then ponder it, then perhaps go do it. Your philosophy comes from what you learn, comes from what you know, comes from other people's experiences. I want you to focus on what does it take when you look at your life very important to focus on the examples of other people of what it takes to live the kind of life that you desire. You want to make it in life? Perseverance is important. Persistence is important. And you got to believe in you. And you got to trust God that things are going to work out. You can do goal setting with a pencil, but you have to do goal getting with your legs. And it's the action that separates us. The greatest gap in this world is the gap between knowing and doing. Knowing is goal setting. Doing, now that's goal achieving. You gotta take action. This attitude is rarely found. Well, anyway, if you've been troubled by the old familiar human malady of running up too many roads and trying to run up more than one at a time, pick the one out of all of them which seems to offer the most promise, forget all the rest, and dig a deep straight highway to your goal in life. You'll be amazed at how quickly it can be reached and the time will pass anyway. A lot of people think that what's possible in their lives is strictly determined by where they came from and what happened to them. No, you have no idea how far you can go, how far you can stretch, how far you can reach. So you've got to take that thing and hold on to that and figure out, well, how can I apply this into my life? You know, I take this, this might be the day mentality that everything comes together for me. You don't know what's possible in your life. You have no idea how far you can reach, how far you can stretch. You have no idea. The happiest people on earth are those who are emotionally involved in what they're doing. This calm, cool, collected bit is all right for cows, camels, and turtles, but it'll never produce a great sermon, symphony, business, piece of architecture, painting, marriage, or the miracle of a child. But when you lose the excitement and heightened feeling of emotion in what you're doing, you'd best look around for something else.
Humans have an unreal capacity to get great at things, even if they don't have a natural talent for it, if they're immersed in it, and to learn something and acquire a ton of knowledge in a short period of time as well. Society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives to just get us distracted so we never get obsessed, we never get laser focused for an extended period of time. People without vision perish and they die in a life of mediocrity. They die with their dreams still in them. They die living a misplaced life, making the cemetery rich in Miles Monroe angry. So for me, my brain saying that's it right there move as fast as a rocket mill. I wanted to change my life. And I think most people that are miserable or that are that are really like dying to be great, we want to change. We want to live a better life. We want to create more for our families. We want to be happier. The the desire is there. It's about how do you go from knowledge to action. If you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. Key phrase, if you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. It's amazing. In baseball, we call it batting after. If you talk to 10 people, one says yes. Now the ratio has begun. One out of 10. Here's something interesting about the law of averages. Once it starts, it tends to continue. I talk a lot about your instincts and inner wisdom. When you set goals, when you have an intention on something that you want to change about your life, your brain helps you. What it does is it opens up a checklist and then your brain goes to work trying to remind you of that intention that you set. And it's really important to develop the skill of knowing how to hear that inner wisdom and that intention kicking in and leaning into it quickly. If you're in a negative vibration, the only thing you can attract to you is something negative. How do you change? Well, one good way is consciously pick the people you associate with. Pick with people who are winning. Go mix with them. Do what they do.